Pulse width modulation or PWM is a term you hear a lot of if you're interested in controlling power output using a microcontroller. It has many applications. One of the most popular amongst hobbyists is controlling the brightness of LEDs. In this tutorial we will cover the basic principles behind PWM and how it can be used for LED brightness control including fading out LEDs rather than just turning them on and off. To control the brightness of an LED you can vary the power which is sent to the LED. The more power the LED receives the brighter it is, the less power the dimmer it is. However microcontrollers are digital meaning they only have two power states on and off. PWM provides the ability to simulate varying levels of power by oscillating the output from the microcontroller. If over a short duration of time we turn the LED on for 50% and off for 50%, the LED will appear half as bright since the total light output over the time duration is only half as much as if it was 100% on. The pulsing width is the important factor here. By varying or modulating the pulsing width we can effectively control the light output from the LED, hence the term PWM or pulse width modulation. When using PWM it's important to consider how slowly we can flash the LED so the viewer does not see the oscillation. The eye's inability to see rapid oscillations of light is caused by our eye's persistence of vision, which means we see the light is on for a short duration even after it's been turned off. This technique is how televisions display a moving picture which is actually made up of a number of different still frames displayed one after another. The minimum speed of an oscillating LED which can be seen by the human eye varies from person to person. However, for the purpose of this tutorial we will use a minimum speed of 50 Hz, or 50 times a second, which is the same speed as used by European televisions. When using PWM there are certain terms which you will come across again and again. The most important is duty cycle. The duty cycle refers to the total amount of time a pulse is on over the duration of the whole cycle, so at 50% brightness the duty cycle of the LED is 50%. The cycle itself is measured, usually, in hertz, which gives us the cycles per second. So at 50 hertz our cycle is 1 second divided by 50 cycles, which is 0.02 seconds per cycle. Since we are using such small time measurements, it's more useful to use microseconds. There are a million microseconds in a second. This gives us a cycle duration of 20,000 microseconds, which is 50 cycles per second or 50 hertz. During the 20,000 microseconds we have to turn the LED either on or off depending on the required duty cycle. So for example, a 75% duty cycle requires the pulse to be on for 15,000 microseconds and then off for 5,000 microseconds. The accuracy with which we can control the duty cycle is known as the PWM resolution. The higher our PWM resolution is, the more levels of brightness we can display. However, since the duty cycle is fixed at 50 Hz, more resolution requires finer timing from the microcontroller. The faster the microcontroller, the smaller durations it can time. Another limiting factor is the code execution. The microcontroller must not only time the interrupt which causes the pulse generation, but also run the code which controls the LED output, which must complete before the next interrupt is called. In addition, you probably want your microcontroller to be performing tasks other than LED PWM brightness control, so there has to be some spare execution time between interrupts to do all of the other more general processing tasks. With PWM control of LEDs, the primary advantage of higher resolutions is that it results in a smaller difference between brightness levels from the LED. For example, if our cycle is 20,000 microseconds and our resolution is only 10,000 microseconds, the difference between on and the lowest possible brightness will be 50% of the total possible brightness from the LED. At a resolution of 2,000 microseconds, the difference will be 10% and so on. The higher the resolution, the more timing accuracy and processing overhead. This animation shows a PWM simulation. The cycle time is 20,000 microseconds or 50 Hz and the resolution is 1,000 microseconds giving us 20 levels of output. For your application, the required resolution and overall cycle may vary. Simple displays require very little precision control, and sometimes a little flickering is not the end of the world. For more advanced displays, the ability to control the levels of brightness might be more critical. For example, the issue of mixing colors using an RGB LED. The trade-off is simple. More control and accuracy requires more and more microcontroller resources. Now let's look at a more practical example using the microchip PIC-18F 4550 microcontroller. In this example, the PIC is running at a clock speed of 48 MHz. This means the crystal oscillates 48 million times a second. The PIC requires four clock pulses for each operation, meaning it can effectively process 12 million instructions per second. This processing speed is important since we will need to use a timer on board the chip to time the interrupt that we need for producing the PWM output. If the processor cycle rate is 12 million cycles a second, this means one microsecond of time passes for every 12 processor cycles. So 1000 microseconds is equivalent to 12,000 processor cycles. This is important because with a 1 to 1 timer prescaler, the PIC's timer updates once every processor cycle. The timer's prescaler slows down the rate at which the timer's counter updates. 
If we use an 8-bit timer, the maximum amount the timer can measure is 256 counts. Therefore, we have to pick a prescaler value which allows us to time 12,000 processor cycles in less than 256 timer counts. If we use a 1 to 64 prescaler, we will require 187 and a half timer ticks to measure 1,000 microseconds. Since we can't measure a half, we simply round this value down to 187. The timer is then set to 255 minus 187, which gives us 68, and then it's started. When the timer overflows, it will have counted the required 187 counts, at which point an interrupt will be generated. The interrupt must reset the timer when it's finished, and the cycle starts again. Once the timer is configured and running, we need some interrupt code to decide if the LED should be on or off for this interrupt. Since we have 20 possible brightness levels, and therefore 20 steps of resolution in our PWM generation, we can simply use a counter which counts from 0 to 19 and is updated once every interrupt. If the brightness of the LED is represented using a number from 0 to 19, we simply have to check if the PWM counter is higher or lower than the brightness number to see if the LED should be on or off. You can see the result of this here where the LED is being cycled through the possible brightness levels. Since we know the cycle duration of the interrupt, we can also use this to provide fading effects on the LED. To do this we have to store two values for the LED brightness, one to store the actual display brightness and another to store the target brightness for the LED. For fading the LED off, we want to decrement the actual brightness level one step at a time until it equals our target brightness. Since there are only 20 levels of brightness, we cannot simply subtract a level on each interrupt call, since the interrupt call is too fast for the fade to be perceived by the viewer. 20 calls would only consume 20,000 microseconds, which is way too fast to see. Instead, we keep another counter which counts the number of interrupt calls which should occur in between decrementing the actual fade level. Since we know the interrupt is called every 1,000 microseconds, it's pretty straightforward to work out how many interrupts we should count to get the desired fading rate. For example, if we want to fade from a brightness level of 19 to 0 in 0.5 seconds, we simply divide the required time in microseconds by the interrupt time of 1000 microseconds and then by the number of levels. You can see this in the video where the LED is being turned on and then allowed to fade. Whilst it's perfectly possible to get PWM controls to work with LEDs using pure guesswork, Calculating the desired optimum values makes more efficient use of the available processor resources, allowing you to both do more with the microcontroller and also control more LEDs simultaneously from the same chip. The same techniques shown here for LEDs can also be used to control motors, analog meter displays, incandescent light bulbs, etc. You can find out more details about this guide and some example PIC18F4550 firmware on my website.